Holidays and playoff football, it really is the best time of the year. Yeah, and nobody has more highlights of teams in Central Florida than this show right here. And I also don't have this theme song either. Roll it, Johnny. About 30 teams from Central Florida made it to the playoffs. Now it's time to see who survived round one. This is Football Friday Night presented by McCoy Federal Credit Union. I'm Joe Kepner. And I'm Jared Oliver. We're going to start in East Orange County where Timber Creek won their district, earning the right to host Lake Mary in the first round. That would mean they would have to find a way to slow down the Rams' passing attack in our game of the week. Gunnar Smith set a Seminole County record with his 81st career touchdown pass last week. First quarter. Actually going to start with defense. Lake Mary in Wolves territory, but Smith's pass is tit. Jalen Chaney coming up with the interception. Wolves can't make anything happen on that possession, but later in the first, Tanner Stevens deep up the seam to Ethan Barnador. 65-yard touchdown, and it's Bedlam in Avalon Park. Go to the end of the first half. Still 7-0, but Colton Boomer, great name for a kicker, connects on a 25-yarder. Four-point game at the break. Let's go to the third. Smith, not having his best night, but finds Caden Harshbarger. I Googled that. Harshbarger means Deer Mountain. It's not important for football, but now we all know. 10-7 Lake Mary. Another boomer field goal. Makes it a six-point lead heading into the fourth, and then with eight minutes to go in the game, it's Smith again to Markel Jones, and he escapes. That's a 55-yard touchdown. 20 straight unanswered points by the Rams. But Timber Creek not quite ready for the offseason. Stevens escapes the pressure, gets it to Marcus Crawl. That TD cuts the lead back to six. Wolves would get the ball back one more time, but the Rams' defense comes up with one more stop, and it is Lake Mary advancing to the regional semifinals, 20-14. to Football Friday night, Shane Whitehead put Rams head coach Scott Perry on the mic. Our guys settled down. Started being focused and played much better in the second half. And, you know, when we eliminated those little mistakes, we were able to drive the football and get down the field. You know, the defense played really well. Uh, our coaches had them prepared well. And, you know, uh, that kept us in the game until our offense was able to get going. You know, a lot of people were talking about it. I'm not going to lie. A lot of people were talking no second round rematch and all that stuff. Um, they, they better get their minds right going into it because if they don't, it's going to be a problem. Seminole County begins another postseason quest for a state title. The Noles won it all last year. This year, they have a chance to become back-to-back -back champions for the first time in school history. The Wildcats elect to receive on the opening kick on second down inside the 10. It's a pitch to Torian Roberts, but fumbles. The Seminole defense picks it up, and they would be pushed out near the 40-yard line. Later in the drive, Luke Rucker finds Darren Lawrence covered, but it doesn't matter, though. Check it out. He's going to break not one, but two tackles. Touchdown Seminoles. They go up 8 0 in the first. Second quarter, Rucker back out leading the offense. Another connection downfield. This time it's Justin Rosado in the corner of the end zone. Nose extend their lead to make it 16 0. Seminoles offense just in rhythm tonight. Rucker looking downfield again for another strike. This time he's going to hit Damari Henderson. He scrolls in the end zone. No problems in this one. Seminole wins 41 27. So next week, Seminole will play Lake Mary for the second time this season. Seminole won the first matchup 29-12, so expect a hard-hitting game next Friday, Joe. COVID-19 caused a few teams to reschedule games this season, including Apopka. Because of that, the Blue Darters finished their season playing three games in eight days, two of them against district opponents. Apopka responded to that challenge by holding those opponents to a combined nine points. The Darters' defense had eight shutouts this season, earning the right to host Creekside in the first round. And I don't think Creekside liked that very much. Pick it up in the third. Andrew McLean with a nice gain. It's going to lead to the first score of the game. And 
That would open the floodgates for the Blue Darters offense. Keandre Jones finds the end zone on the next possession to make it 14-0. Then later in the third, it's Quincy Frazier from 10 yards out. APK 21-0. And yada, 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 yada. Blue Darters dominate the second half of this game, eventually knocking Creekside off the bracket with their ninth shutout of the season. 42 to 0. So Apopka will face the winner of this matchup. Lake Brantley traveling to Bartram Trail just south of Jacksonville. First drive of the game. Mason Norwood. Dilly dilly. Patriots setting the tone, taking a 6 0 lead on the road. But Bartram answers quickly. Riley Trujillo, not much room to make this throw, but he drops it in perfectly to John Pierung for a big first down. A few plays later, Bears fooling the camera. AJ Magus is like, yeah, take that camera guy. Bartram with a 7-6 lead. Later in the first, it's Kay Duncan at QB. Hits Eli Sutherland, big tight end. It's okay, Lake Brantley. I probably couldn't tackle that dude either. Bartram up 14-6 at the half. Pulled away after the juice boxes and orange slices, winning this one 42-6. And so it will be a Popka and Bartram trail in the next round. And since the Bears are the two seed, a Popka is the three. The Blue Darters will be on the road for that. West Orange, a perfect 5-0 in district play. The Warriors face Durant High School for another 8A playoff matchup tonight. The Warriors driving down the field. Terrell Walden makes some good cuts. Bad tackling by the Durant defense. Walden breaks the plane and gives him six points. The Cougars looking to respond. Marcus Miguel finds Elian Gonzalez across the middle to move the chains. And that'll make it first down Durant. All right, and then for the drive, Wood stall out, and they would just have to settle for a Durant field goal. Check out this next play, though. Tyler Huff finds Eddie Kelly in double coverage. This is a tough catch right here. Officials will call it a touchdown, and the Warriors will also get some special team love on this one as well. Javon Robinson returns it down the near sideline. The kicker, eventually he wouldn't be able to make the, the tackle. The Warriors would win big in this one, 55-6. And the Warriors will take on Osceola next week in the regional semifinals. The Cowboys were a touchdown better than the number three seed, Newsom, tonight. All right, Boone Braves won 8A District 5. Their prize was a first-round date with Wellington. First quarter, Wolverines possession. Check out this hit. Ja'Cory Thomas blows up the receiver. Wellington was forced to punt. Second quarter, the Braves milking the clock. Casey St. John throws a beauty into the end zone, and Ja'Cory Thomas making plays on both ends. Braves cap off the drive and go up two scores. Boone gets the ball back at the start of the second half, and Xavion Westbrook back for the return, and he sets up the offense with really good field position out near the 35. A few plays later, we've seen this connection before. St. John to Aiden Mazel, a connection once again, here it is again. Mizell out in space. You can't tackle what you can't catch. He's going for 75 yards. He lets off the gas about 20 yards out. Boone wins 42 to 7. And the Braves might not get to play another game at home in these playoffs. They'll travel to Treasure Coast next week. If they win that game, Boone would most likely have to go to Palm Beach Gardens for the regional finals. All right, jump over to Port Orange Spruce Creek, trying to take down Tim Tebow's alma mater. First quarter, Marcus Stokes under pressure and somehow slips away. He's going to take a shot as he throws it, and then he has to get up and try to make a tackle. Quarterback's job is never done. Ben Sword with the interception. He takes it all the way back inside the Panthers' 10-yard line. Next play, first and goal. Kevin Minkler, the touchdown sprinkler. Diving for the pylon, 7-0 Spruce Creek. But in the second, Panthers with second and goal from the nine. Stokes, plenty of time to set his feet. Hits a very pumped up Grant Stevens. Ties the game at seven. Later in the second, Stokes again, dumping it off to Dom Henry. One missed tackle, and he's gone. A 60-yard touchdown. That's going to give Nice its first lead of the game. Let's go to the third now. Stokes and Henry causing trouble for Spruce Creek again. Already had more than 1,000 receiving yards before this game. Puts Nice in front 21-7. Hawks would come back to tie it at 21, but a field goal would be the difference. Nice wins it 24-21. Bartow, a big underdog tonight against Edgewater, and over the next minute and 10 seconds, you're going to know why. No score in the first quarter when C.J. Baxter takes the pick skin for a 25-yard ride through the heart of the Yellow Jacket defense. Seven zip Eagles later in the first. It's the Edgewater special teams coming up big. Looks like Thomas Anderson is going to block that punt from Bartow. Eagles get the ball 
in Yellow Jacket territory. That led to this. Quarterback Chase Carter with a laser to Camp McGee. Good coverage, better throw. 14-0 Eagles. How about some more special teams? Edgewater's Alec Farinak with the onside kick. After that score, Damon Troutman recovers, and Edgewater's offense gets to go back on the field. The Eagles drive all the way down the field, and it's that guy right there, Baxter, capping it off with a short score. 21-0 Edgewater still in the first. Second quarter now, Barto looking to turn things around, but the snap goes over the head of Lynn Johnson. Edgewater recovers and is set up on the doorstep again. This time, it's Khalil Washington's turn to celebrate in the end zone. 28-0 at that point, and Edgewater rolls in this one 42-13. So Edgewater will take on Lake Gibson next week. The Braves advance with a 24-20 win over Lakeland tonight. And I head up to A1A to Neptune Beach, Orange City University, trying to pull off the upset at Fletcher. Titans up 6-0 after that touchdown heave from Taz Figueroa, the Noble Thomas to Noble Thomas. But in the second, University down 14-7. Everyone, including the camera guy, thinks it's a run to the right. But no, Figueroa, so sneaky, wins the race to the pylon. The game now tied at 14. Then check out this play. The snap a little too hot to handle, but Figueroa recovers. Coaches would say to just throw it away, but no, he launches it deep instead, and Chris Johnson hauls it in. Go ahead and watch that play again as we tell you that University goes on to win 35-14. So University will face Buchholz in the second round. Uh, Bobcats are the number one seed in that region, so they will host the Titans next Friday. And a couple other scores from for you from the 7A bracket. Melbourne thumped Seminole Ridge 41-7, so the Bulldogs will face Martin County in the next round after they eliminated Vieira 26-15. And the playoff party isn't over yet. Coming up, we'll take you to the 6A bracket to see if Jones could take down Malin for the second time this season. Plus, Merritt Island went 91 in the regular season, earning the number one seed in their region, hoping to use that home field advantage against Leesburg tonight. And Tavares riding a nine game winning streak into the playoffs, hoping to avoid the upset by satellite. We're gonna get to all of that, I promise. But first, round one of tonight's Battle of the Bands, Farah and Farah bringing you all the halftime festivities. Absolutely, and the first band to take the field tonight, Timber Creek. Mm -hmm. 